Yo, good people of Earth. Thank you very much for clicking this video. You well, already did good, you see? And it's not a coincidence you have clicked. Because here, it's a place of good vibes. And we are all about spreading love, peace, and showing the importance of unity and forgiveness. And how do we do this? By reacting together. Me and you, through different types of videos. Good vibes videos, creepy videos, work videos, even other videos I don't know, you don't know, but good vibes videos with the intentions of spreading love out there to the one, you see? Kindly, stick on around and hit the rec button. Straight out of Africa with good vibes, lots of good vibes. Tell us where you're watching from and let's dive in. By the way, grab some snacks because you shall also see, see me or may see me with some weird snacks, creepy snacks. Good vibes, we just the intentions of spreading good vibes. Let's dive in, man. Much love to yourself. Huh. Oh my god. Oh, what is happening here? Looks like, hey, looks like some good vibes people here. They were. What, what were they doing? These are some guys that carry stuff, huh? Oh, huh. Looks really interesting. Hmm. Some guy took those guys in the streets that carry stuff. The guys that usually do work for carrying luggages for people around. And they took them to the shop. Bought them some milk, something to eat. And that is good vibes, man. You see? Most of these people, they serve the people around them. And they are really hard working. And they don't have time or anyone to just be good to them, give them a hug and share compassion and love, you see? And it really helps some hands out there, you see? That's why you are saying, love your neighbors, you love yourself. Just like this animal's teacher. Cool vibes, man, you see? That is interesting. Natural mercury from Bartnet. Oh my god. Huh. Oh my god. Do you guys really mean that mercury is found from bartonets? Huh? Do you know that? That is new. This is a new phenomenon, man. This is also I told you. We shall see new videos, new stuff, stuff we don't know. Myself, this I told you is my first time seeing this and I'm surprised that maybe mercury come from bartonets. Huh? That means that uh, it's me that... Uh, have been uh, not keen because they already could have gotten some mercury already. You see here yeah, there are some parts that ring around at night and you see I could have traced where they live. You see we know they are where they live and we live with them in peace. If I knew they produce mercury we could have maybe have an agreement with them. And now this is useful stuff. Huh? Maybe you could have been some scientist um, doing you now sending it up in a sense form, you see? With some chemicals that are helpful and helps people to be loving to one another. Good vibes. What is this? Strange extraterrestrial radar try to attack to suppressed people. How did that radar try to attack? It was just moving in some weird type of way. They could have just hit it with something and see what's up. The stones in the pyramids were too big to move. And this is a clear illustration. These are so many people that looks like they are well, well, well fed people. And moving this stone around is taking them some time. Now imagine the, the number of or the energy it took the people back then to build the pyramids as they, as they say. If they were slaves, I don't know even if it's not slaves, just just say they assume they were normal people. How could they have been that carried such type of stones up to that high? You see, we have seen previous episodes that have seen that pyramids are very tall, you see? You know people could carry stones, you mean to those extreme levels. Please tell me that's not to think about that. That is really creepy. Oh my god. 
and in some uh, mechanical workshop here some guys his partner is like they are alive it's like they fix a lot of stuff and they just feel like working what's up with that oh wait, 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 wait. say that last sentence again Everything that we see is a projection of what's happening within our own mind, our own conscious, and all of the conscious together, that's what God is. God is not someone off up in the sky that's preaching down, looking down, and be like, you sin, electric pole, you're going to hell. No, God is a collective consciousness of everyone. I'm God, you're God, everyone here is God. Okay, now if what you say is right, that I cannot perceive reality, I just make up reality in my head with my perception. It doesn't mean you make it up, no. but you are able to interpret the reality differently than how you might interpret it right now. It doesn't mean that it's just, whew, you know, made up. It's how you perceive things. Really? Well, then where does your rational mind come from? My rational mind comes from my consciousness. What does that mean? My consciousness is basically how, from birth, I, my life perceives all of the information around it. I'm sure you know of the Trinity body, mind, and spirit. When we're born, we are born with the spirit, the new mind, and a new body. So we have the collective consciousness, which is the spirit, which is in all of us. The body is the physical way that we experience the reality, and the mind is the mind that interprets it, the actual consciousness. What is spirit? Spirit is what a lot of people like to refer to as God. Spirit is the kind of consciousness that everyone has and is able to basically use. And what can happen is when all the collective consciousness comes together with the same intent, that is when a miracle is able to happen because there's such a strong force behind it, the unseen force that has a lot to do with quantum physics, that unexplainable things start to happen. And just because we're not to explain it now doesn't mean that we can't explain it into the future when we start learning about new things, the quantum mechanics, the way that consciousness really works. What is spirit? Where does spirit come from? Spirit started from the great beginning. A lot of people like to call it the Big Bang, everything like that. There was one consciousness. Y'all, I mean, you might refer to him as God. A lot of people refer to him as a lot of different things. And as that happens, God, God, consciousness, wants to experience life in as many ways as it can. So it might send consciousness as this guy right here. Intelligent, smart guy, you know, he's experiencing consciousness in his own way. And then he might want to send it to some other person in India who grows up in a, a, you know, some kind of temple, Buddhist temple, whatever. And he's experiencing his consciousness in a different way. So it is all of the same consciousness experiencing it in different realms. Does this stone have consciousness? That is an extremely good question, and that's something that we're trying to figure out right now, is if inanimate things are able to have a consciousness. I'll tell you what the stone does have, is it all resonates on the same frequency that I do. You're bringing up energy and matter. Well, quantum physics is starting to show that everything is not as solid as we thought. It's more like a light wave, and it's a condensed light wave that is able to just manifest into something that's actually hard. So what we're trying to figure out now is in what difference is my body have to this rock because they're same of them they're made of the same elements the same energy the same matter that is where the buddhists get the idea that the observer seeing and the phenomenon are one and the same they're not actually separate because we are all made of the same building box the same unit that our reality is constructed of sir you're making there was a big bang right about 15 billion years ago what are you saying there was a big bang about 15 billion years ago. How the universe started, I don't know. But Do you accept the big bang theory or not? I contemplate it. Aristotle once said that as a mark of an educated mind to be able to contemplate an idea without accepting it. Okay. So you don't accept the big bang, you just contemplate it. Right. Okay. Now, if your worldview is right, that consciousness is this vague thing, and that maybe this rock, no. has consciousness it, it might be it might. it might then why do you step on the rock and don't step on him if the rock has consciousness and he has consciousness why do you step on the rock and not step on him just because i'm stepping on ground doesn't mean that i'm inflicting any kind of pain or hate to it what's the difference between me taking a machete cutting a head of lettuce cutting a cow's head or cutting his head because, is there a difference yes there absolutely is a difference what's the basis because Plants are a way that everything in this life receives nutrition. There is not a single way to deny that. Everything comes from plants. And just because you're using a plant doesn't mean that you're even, again, 
hurting it, inflicting any kind of pain because you're cycling through what is known as life. I would never hurt another human being because we're of the same species. You don't see lettuce going around chopping each other down. There's one universal force in the world, and it's consciousness, and if you ask me, consciousness is the same thing as love. Okay, All very good. Is, is love. That's where you and I disagree. If what you say is true, nobody has innate value, they just have subjective value that we choose uh, to subjectively give ourselves. That would not be true as where the question comes in. Huh, listen to you guys after that, man. Oh my god. Huh? What? What are you doing, Baze? <laughs> Baze. What did you, what what did you did do you? to your bed? <laughs> what did you do? What, oh, buddy. what is this business what? here? <laughs> What did you do? Oh my gosh, where did he get these? Uh, Where'd you get all these feathers? Bays off. Oh, he's like, my I don't know, goodness. but they're the best thing ever. You're going to choke to death tonight. Bubby. What? Oh my gosh. Jesus. Ugh. You're such a good girl, aren't you, Punky? <laughs> well, I hope you're warm. Oh, Baze Baze. <laughs> You're a mess. Okay. Uh, night. We love you. Night. Stay warm when you're down bed. <laughs> Tell me how. Programmable in humans. Yes, your phone can. Listen, your biofield is 80% your aura is 80% of your uh so in the the fifth 1950s this is in my in my new book i put this in my new book you the the biofield is your aura and the that's what the government calls it the government calls your biofield calls your aura the biofield and your biofield makes up 80% of your immune system and i'm going to tell you this the whole concept of you sending an email from your phone is the same technology that they use today to hack your biofield they can hit you with frequencies, send you data things. They can send, they, just because you can't see it does not mean it's not there. When you, excuse me, when you send an email, you're like, oh wow, the email disappeared and vanished and went somewhere. No, there is a digital line that is anchored to your phone. You can't see it right now, but there is something attached to your phone and it's going somewhere. There's things above us that it's connecting to. And the thing is just how they, um, the biofield of a phone can be hacked and programmable they've figured that out on how to do that to us that's why i'm saying it's important to wear crystals it's important to strengthen your biofield that's why i talk about yielding angstroms i've scanned people that are zero check this out see this so the body yields angstroms so check this out that's good six seven that's lit. Nine? My body's lit right now. The body needs to yield angstroms. That is your aura right now. That is the power of your aura. That's why when I hop on this thing, check this out. This is a grounding mat. Now check this out. This is my aura when I step on it. It's pushing. It's, this is what happens when you ground. And this is the outer part of my aura. See how it goes up? I'm projecting my aura by stepping on this. You need to do the inner work. You need your biofill strong. There's a reason I haven't been sick in years. And it's because if, if they can weaken your biofield, they can. That's why I tell you illnesses are a frequency. Illnesses are a frequency. And it, what they do is they lower your vibration. Hence your aura field, your biofield. They, they, they lessen that, dampen that. And now you can get hit with, uh, what is that? These, um, you can get hit with these illnesses. And that's what quantum healing is. You do these things like med beds or whatever, and what they do is they vibrate your cells, and your cells shake, uh, shake the cancer out and shakes the the illnesses out of your your cells. That's why when you do ayahuasca, you're throwing up everything. You're when you're throwing up so much with and doing ayahuasca, it's because your cells at their their core are shaking and they're opening and shaking all the impurities out, and that's why you throw up. That's why it's really good to do shrooms. When you do shrooms, you're getting that same type of thing. Oh my god, hmm. Did you know that? The person yeah, who discovered this little secret is definitely a genius. 
By adding glue to cotton, it becomes even harder than iron. Why is that? Once we understand this principle, we can use it to repair various small items around the house. Now, let me show you a method to fix a water pipe with cotton. First, determine the size of the hole, then find a plastic bottle, mark the size on it, and cut it out to get a piece of plastic that's slightly larger than the damaged area. Next, sand the plastic to roughen it up, and then use glue to attach one end of a tie strap to the plastic piece. After that, you can insert the plastic into the inner wall of the pipe and glue it in place. Do you think that's it? Oh no. To prevent the plastic from falling off, we need to take a small tuft of cotton and fill it into the damaged area. Drip glue on it and let it naturally dry and solidify completely. Then you can use a utility knife to trim it up a bit. I dare say, unless you look closely, you can't tell that this pipe has been repaired. Take a look. Here's a screw post that's already broken. If you just drip glue on it to fix it, you can tell it's not strong enough. At this point, all you need is to take a tuft of cotton, wrap it around the screw post, and then drip glue to fix it in place. I guarantee it won't break anytime soon. Of course, it can also be used to fill screw holes. When your screw hole is too large, you can use this method to re-secure the screw. Check out the detailed operations in the video. Those with good hands-on skills will understand it at a glance. So, does everyone know the principle behind this? Please type out your answer. Oh my god, huh? That's interesting, man. <clears throat> demons don't want to, these demons they go in and out of the water. They don't come from the land. They have no base here on the land. It's all underwater. And that's where they started their engineering and stuff. I think that when God said he was gonna flood the earth, they knew it. You know? It was the people that fought against it, you know, said, oh, you're crazy and this and that, but the demons didn't think so. They knew. And I think that they, when they went underground, see, some of these underground bases weren't built by us. They were already there. Right. So I think that what happened was when uh, Jesus cast them into the water, they hate the abyss. They hate it. But that's where they've got to stay. And that's why these, they call them USOs, you know, underground. All of them go to the ocean. They all go into the lakes and water. All of them. Yeah, Bar none. I've heard that there are huge civilizations uh, in the oceans of these entities. And in fact, recently, uh, I was even told that when, you know, when, when the... A lot of people think, for example, let me just back up and say it like this, Brother Greg. They say that, oh, there, you know, it's not, there's not going to be uh, uh, alien invasion or nothing like that. We're not going to be dealing with that. That's just all made up. It's going to be Blue Beam, Project Blue Beam, and people are only going to be imagining things. And, uh, and, and so I asked about that, and I was told, well, that's an illusion in people's minds because, no, they really are coming but they're going to be mostly coming from the oceans. They're not going to be coming from outer space. They're going to be coming from the oceans. That's the way it was put to me. And they said that um, the other thing that was brought to my attention too was, you know, they said, Steve, you remember the scripture that says, you know, that man's hearts will fail for fear because yeah. of the fearful sights of thinking, things coming up on the earth. He said, do you have any idea what is in the inner earth? You know, and said that, uh, you know, we, we they feel like that mostly because of the binary system that is headed in our direction, that it causes the cracking in the Earth's crust and things, and it is allowing uh, these creatures. So there's, there's, they said, I was told dinosaurs are not extinct. They live in the inner Earth, but they said the dinosaurs, nothing compared to some of these creatures. Said, forget the alien. Forget the demonic entities. So there are creatures that are so massive, they look like Godzilla from one of these old Jap uh, Chinese movies or something. They are. They're so massive, man. The, um, I'm talking about, you know, 120 foot tall, you know, Godzilla, basically, 120 foot tall. Whether they breathe fire or not, I don't know. But I know that um, some of these creatures are so massive. And, you know, they come kind of sometimes as a little tiny orb. But you don't know that son of a gun might be, you know, 20 foot tall. When it, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I've heard and the so orbs are very dangerous. I've heard that when you see like these little balls of light that, uh, that, that a lot of people say, oh, that's an orb. They said that they're very, those, he said those orbs, they said they're very religious. They speak telepathically to people. 
said, but if you rub one of those things the wrong way, it'll kill you. Yep, you immediately. People die of heart attacks all the time on these ghost hunts. And it's funny that, you know, that, oh, there's no such thing as aliens and ghosts and blah, 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 but boy, they're sure looking for them, aren't they? And you know what? Be careful what you look for. You know, don't, what does the Bible say? Don't poke a stick in the hole lest you fall in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, that's exactly what it's talking about. Don't, you know, don't go looking for the living among the dead because they're, the dead people are dead. That's it. They're dead. Yes. Brother Greg, and, I, I remember one time you mentioned in one of the broadcasts the, the name of Jesus that you guys had to take an, a, a, a swear an allegiance never to mention the name of Jesus. Can you share that about that? Yeah, you, you couldn't. You couldn't say it when you were around any of the entities. They said keep your beliefs to yourself. But yet they had Catholic priests go down in there, um, cast them out of some. I guess some of the employees. You know, they got possessed. And, um, but if you were to use the name of Jesus around there, even in anger, they would, um, it, it didn't appeal to them. They'd go berserk. You know, that reminds me that you mentioned that there. There was a movie, and I forget the name of it. I've shared it with people before. Uh, they don't, the people don't really understand what the movie is about other than, these uh, Marines come back from uh, the Middle East. They're possessed really bad. It's based on a true story. Uh, the Catholic, uh, or the, there's a detective in the story. He later in real life becomes a Catholic priest after seeing uh, this one Catholic priest cast this demon out of this one uh, soldier. And I remember the, uh, the contact that I have in <coughs> Washington he actually went and met that police officer that became a priest and he asked him about the movie he says how much of this movie would you say is accurate and what would you say was the most accurate part he said it's 80 percent accurate and he said in that part where you see the demon cast out in the movie he said that's a hundred percent spot on he said i was there he said that's what changed my life but now what they don't tell you in the movie though is why these three soldiers got possessed to begin with. And he told me when we went to war in Iraq, he said we didn't go to war because of oil or anything like that. He said we wanted we the body the of museum. Yeah, that and he said they wanted the body of Nimrod. He said they mm -hmm. knew that Nimrod's body had been discovered. He said uh, 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 Hussein had made the statement that it was. He said, in fact, Hillary Clinton was showing up a lot at the White House during that time. And Bill wasn't even president. This was under Bush's uh, leadership and said that they were discussing getting the body of Nimrod the entire time. Uh, he said, but what happened? He said that when the soldiers went down in that cave where his body was, he said three of those soldiers did come back totally possessed of some kind of evil entity. Uh, and he said, of course, the body of Nimrod they discovered, too, was about seven foot tall uh, and said that he had multiple rows of teeth, just like the what they talk about. The uh, Nephilim. Yes. Nephilim. Yeah, exactly. He said he was definitely a Nephilim, descendant of Nephilim. And it was like the Kandahar giant that we hear uh, like L.A. Marzulli talk about, things like that. Yeah. And uh, and he said that he said initially he said we brought him back. We we put that body underneath the airport in Colorado. And the last that he had heard is that the Israelis had overtaken the project and they're trying to put a soul, a demonic soul back into that body and resurrect it. As crazy as that might sound, that was the last I heard on that. Have you ever heard any well, of that kind of stuff? Here, here's where it's at. It's at CERN, where the CERN Collider is. Okay, okay. That's where they're going to get the demonic entity to put in. That's, uh, I was told that, Brother Greg. I was told that they had actually, when CERN had opened up one of the, uh, the dimensional portals, that there was a demon that was communicating with them, and that demon was saying that he was the spirit of Nimrod, and they're trying to figure out how to get his spirit into that body. And, and, and speaking of aliens, I know why well, you get me so inspired. Oh my god, huh? That's unbelievable, man. Huh. Do you ever hear the term being fired? 
Anybody here ever been fired? You know? Do you know where this term comes from? I mean, it's in our mass consciousness. Everybody here has heard the phrase, I've been fired or being fired. Well, in Rome, 2,000 years ago, if you wanted to take your neighbor's property, you tried to buy it. You know, you tried to get your neighbor's property. And if that didn't work, you sent somebody over there and burned them out of their house, burned their house to the ground. Thus the term being fired. Now, how many people knew that? I don't know. Yet you know the term, you know the phrase being fired. Okay. Also with society, as we know it, you know about angels. You know about aliens. I'm sure you've all heard about unicorns, right? We're going to show you what they look like and with the horsemen that are riding them. Um, you've heard of ghosts. Where do ghosts live? Can anybody answer that for me? Because I see on the net now with, these, with the phenomena of the orbs and the energy and the streaks and all that, they have more labeled as ghosts. You know, they're saying they're not aliens. They're ghosts. You're wrong, Sargell. They're ghosts. Don't be a megalomaniac, they told me. I'm like, oh, that's a neat word. I looked it up. I didn't know whether to be offended or thought it was cool. Okay, because I must have scared them somehow to call me such a name. And I said, well, where do ghosts live? Where do ghosts hang out? I'm like, in the astral plane, don't they? They're not third dimensional, yet you see them in third dimension. I go, also, every time a ghost seems to be around or a ghost story, isn't it always rainy out? Always a thunderstorm in the books? Well, in the stories, most of them. It's always rainy out, right? Thunderstorm, you know, haunted house. Well, why? Because in order to see these creatures, especially now that dimensions of the astral and the third dimension are now coming together, and they'll be fully here together in the year 2003, if I'm still right with my predictions, that anytime there's moisture in the air or a mist or a fog, if you take a camera outside and you shoot, you're going to start to see things on your film that you would never have seen before. And the pictures that are on the wall back there behind my table are the vortex openings that I did in June when I came out here. Global Science had me out, and they're wonderful people. And we opened a couple of vortexes in Horse Tooth and El Dorado Canyon, I believe it was. And these people took their cameras that they've been shooting, the rain, plain old 35 millimeters that they've been shooting their last 10 years, and they shot, and you see the evidence on the wall there. Now, I work for Defense Intelligence as a remote viewer. Actually, the agents, not the actual agency. You see, when an agent, at the end of his career, you know, they accumulate a lot of money and stuff, and they hide it all away. And at the end of the career, they, like, buy shopping centers and stuff like that and turn it into good money. And they used me to go to high-level meetings. Now, the reason I'm wearing black instead of white, like most of you see me all white and I'm wearing black, for two reasons. One, this is how I used to dress when I used to go to work. For World Banking, World Pharmaceuticals, and the agents of Defense Intelligence. When I went to a high-level meeting, this is what I looked like. And I would sit there and I would read whoever it is we were dealing with, and tell my client whether they were lying or whether they weren't. Of course, when $100 million is going across the table, everyone's lying. It's just who's lying to our advantage. Now, I thought I was unique. Mm -mm. Billionaires use people like me. And I was told that by a monarch from a country called Tajistatan. I was invited to the United Nations birthday party. I was invited to President Clinton's inaugural, even though it's probably something not to say, but I was invited there because of my abilities. I made them a lot of money, and they tried to lock me up, basically, and keep me as a genie in a bottle. They bought me a $500,000 condo, and I had all the money in the world that I needed to align and buy all the neat little toys that a magician like myself would want. Hmm. Yes. Why did no one warn me of the consequences about having a female cat? She's currently in heat for the first time. She's seven months old. And she keeps howling. She keeps howling. I'm currently on roughly around between day two out of four to ten days. And it's non-stop. Plus she's walking around with her ass in the air. Put your ass down, cat. What is this behaviour? I don't know what else to do. I don't know if there's any advice. No one warned me of this. She's not new. She's not spaded because she's an indoor cat. So I thought there was no need to. But no one warned me of the consequences of this behaviour. She's literally screaming all day and all night. And she's walking around with her ass in the air. Like a cheap prostitute. 
what am I supposed to do? Let me know in the comments. Follow for updates. Oh, I think uh, that is absolutely normal. You know, pangolins are the most trafficked animals in the world, and it's kind of strange that the very scales that nature provided for them to protect themselves with are the source of their demise, because these scales are thought to be medicinal in the east, and has led to this being the most trafficked animal on the planet. No, no. Are you serious? I've had... There is no way. I've had this since the fall of 2019. It's been two years. Oh, are you kidding? Oh my God, huh? Okay, so I got an interesting message last night from a group of beings that called themselves the Council of Seven. So they were seven light beings that basically were a collective and I saw them as like a blue energy ball. They are a group that are, are watching over the progress of the star seeds on Earth and they're here to support and help us elevate ourselves. Their message was that we need to make sure that our containers are clear. We're drinking water, eating light foods, maybe doing shorter eating windows so that our bodies and our containers are lighter and that we are clearing the space for the higher frequencies that are coming in so that they can anchor in better. When I asked where these energies were coming from, they said that, said that they were coming in from the planets. And this is planets like the sun, but it's actually all of the planets. And the planets are accentuating certain energies and bringing in certain things for people to face things at certain times. But they're also just bringing in higher frequencies than they have before. When I asked why this change has happened and why new higher frequencies are being brought in, they said that this is just the natural progression of events. This is the natural evolution of consciousness. And this is what happens as we move forward. They said that right now it's these energies that are helping increase the frequency of the earth as well as the star seeds on earth and the support that beings like themselves are giving to those star seeds. Oh my god Huh Do you mean these guys are in space? Wonderful ugly. How do you think uh, these people are? You see? You think this is very important? Please, be the judgment. I'd like to hear your comments on this. And on all those videos that I've passed, you see? Because you are a wonderful soul and you are loved. And uh, your comments mean a lot in this channel. Eh? Because you get to see the. See what you like it. Oh, it really helps in the build this channel. Leave some comment there. Hit the link button. Okay, I have a question for you. Because you can learn so much about somebody based on the way that they answer this question. So, if you could choose your spiritual gift, which one do you wish you had? Teaching, healing, prophecy, or discernment, okay? If you could choose your spiritual gift, which one do you wish you had? Teaching, healing, prophecy, or discernment. So let me know which one you would choose, and I'm gonna post a video on Thursday explaining what each one of those says about you. Which one would you choose, my good friend? Please leave some comment.
Monastery. Pay attention to the Yo, good people of Ah, thanks for watching up to this part, man. You are loved and respected. You see, there's a lot of videos that has passed. Good vibes videos, work videos, funny, some information that uh, I don't know how you found it. And I'd like you to leave a comment so I didn't know or you don't know how you thought about it. You see, when this video that has passed previously, and it has a lot of different stores that are lovely and beautiful and they are precious and worth a lot of money, you see? But the most precious stores out there and uh, worth a lot of stuff that we even can't value is you humans, you see? All of us, man. Every human out there is a precious soul, a wonderful one. Just let yourself watch it. That's why you should taste your neighbor as you love it to be treated, you see, treat them like the precious stone that they are. That's the same way you should be treated. This good vibes, man. You are loved and respected. Hit some comments there and hit the super thanks if possible. Good vibes. This mm. idea, because this will really kick you to another level. <clears throat> many times we know that many of you visualize the idea of your ideal reality. That's all well and good. But many of you are under the misguided assumption that that picture in your mind of the ideal reality is as good as it can get. From the higher mind's perspective, that's just the beginning. So why insist that the reality has to manifest only to the best that your physical mind can picture it when in fact, that is just the starting point for the higher mind and let the higher mind bring you something even better than you could possibly have imagined. You can use that as a template, as a starting point, but don't insist that that picture in your physical mind is as good as it can possibly be because it's not. And the idea also is to understand that the physical mind is not designed to know how something is going to happen. It's only designed to know how something is happening and has happened. It doesn't have the ability to know how something is going to happen. The higher mind does that job. 